Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's tutorial, we will talk about how to fix measures that got broken by calculation groups. If you're thinking to, my, to yourself, Andre, how can a calculation group break my measures? Allow me to demonstrate. So I have two measures in my case. I have a measure that just simply returns, this is a text, and the name of the measure is text, test, text. The next one is test number, which just sums some sort of random data that I've incorporated into this model. Now, how am I gonna be testing this scenario? What I've done is I've created a card control that is sourcing my test text measure. I have created another card control that is sourcing my text number measure. And I'm also looking at a text box here. And I have two values in the text box. I have test text and I have test number. And as you can see, as long as my I, I have the calculation groups for metric type, I will show you the code later. Right now, metric value just returns selected measure and increment by one returns nothing. And as you can see, everything is working great. The reason I have this measure uh, metric type or calculation group item called increment by one is to demonstrate a scenario that does in fact break some of the measures. So uh, the break occurs when the calculation item returns something that's not a string. And then if you do have a measure that does return a string, like for example here, that measure gets broken. And um, what happens, uh, those types of measures are actually quite common. If you wanna have a dynamic title or something like that, where you're concatenating things or showing a title for a specific user or a product group, then those types of measures that return a text are very useful. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and break this. And then the second thing, we're gonna go ahead and fix it. Or actually kind of fix it because one of the three scenario actually right now is not fixable. At least I don't know how to fix it. If you guys do know how to fix it, please leave your answer in the comments for this video. So here we're looking in tabular editor and we have two calculation items. The first one is called metric value and the second one is called increment by one. So as you can see right now, both of them, all they do is just return selected measure. And if I go back to Power BI, you will see that I could pick either of those metric types. And depending on, regardless of what I pick, all of these variables still work. Let's go ahead and break it now. So let's see how I'm gonna break it. Basically, I'm gonna add a scenario where I just wanna take my measure and increment its value by one. So this is a very simple scenario in your case, you, for example, are calculating year over year, year over year percent. So you're taking a value for sales, cost of goods sold, headcount, whatever it might be. And you wanna use calculation groups to, to, to figure out what a year over year is or some other uh, metrics that will return a number. So as long as I have any kind of thing here that returns a number, if I hit Control S to save this, let's see what happens in Power BI. As soon as I switch to Power BI after I make the change in the tabular editor, you see that now my text measure seems to work okay. It says this is a text. My number measure also seems to work okay. It returns 15, but my text box no longer returns the first value. This is a text. It only returns the variable that is a number. And if I click here, you will see that I do have a placeholder for the first one, test text but it doesn't return anything, it only returns 15. So if I click off, you will see that I only see 15 here. Now let's see what happens if I click increment by one. All of a sudden, my text measure text box, as well as the text box uh, for the uh, text control, both are broken. And if I click on see details, then what it says is cannot convert value, this is a text of type text to type numeric date. So basically it makes sense. In our code to increment one, we take selected measure, we add plus one, and then if, if I give this formula something that's not a number, obviously DEX will fail. So we need to figure out how we can fix this. So it turns out to fix it, we have to let, write a little bit of DEX. So the problem is that we're trying to do math operation on measures that are not numeric. So what we need to do is we need to use some sort of naming convention and introduce something into variable name that will allow us to treat it differently. So for example, what I've done in my text measures, I added the word text, or sometimes what I do, I add the word label, LBL, or something like this, so that what I could do is, I'm gonna declare a variable, measure name, I could take a look what measure it is, 
and then I'm gonna see if I can find that substring in, in the measure name. And if I can, I'm gonna populate is ignore uh, variable with that number, or rather I'm gonna see if, if it's more than zero, if it is more than zero, then uh, that variable, that text was found in the name of the measure. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a return statement and then say is ignore, do I see the text in the name of the variable? If I do, just return the measure itself. Don't do anything to it because it's a text measure. If I don't, then go ahead and assume that it's a number and do your arithmetic on top of that. So that would be something we need to do for the value. And then we need to do a very similar thing for the format string expression that'll go at the very bottom here. And just to make it easier for you guys to see, all I've done is I've replaced selected measure with selected measure format string. And that's all it's gonna do. So if my measure that's coming in is formatted as a number, then I will return it formatted as a number or a date, whatever. So you could play with your formats, percentages, whatever you wanna return. But basically what you wanna do is, if you wanna ignore it, use the same format string as the measure that's coming in. Otherwise, format it whichever way you need to format, giving on a scenario that you're trying to implement with this calculation item in this calculation group. Now let's see if this fix actually works in Power BI. And now we can see in Power BI is when I select metric name, this is the text I could see, number measure is 15, text box is 15. So it's not kind of working because it doesn't show the text. If I click on increment by one, then you will see that the text is still working, the number measure is still working, but the text box, the measure for text is still not working. So basically it's kind of a fix. It should work, right? Because we are doing uh, that check for the data type. However, there's something in the way text, bo text box works that makes that fix not workable for this particular scenario. So basically what that means is that if you do need to show a text-based measure, what you need to do is uh, you can implement the fix that I've specified before, and you would put that measure into a car control, and I think just about any other um, visualization in Power BI will work. The only one where I found it reliably does not work is this text box control. So I don't know if this is something I should file as a bug, maybe it's a feature, but that's one scenario where this fix doesn't seem to be working very well. That's about it for today. If you think that this Power BI desktop model will be useful for you, go ahead in the description of this video, click on the link to my blog, and then you can download it there. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you back soon.